Good morning guys, I am Lee and you are watching another episode of Barham Engines. So, manic week, really enjoyed it. Got some quality work coming in, got some great phone calls for some potential quality work. Um, but we've had a little bit of a change around. Let's see what's come in. First of all, guys, which is gonna be in our second channel, Barham Engine Stories, the diff for the kit car. Yeah, head over at the weekend, whenever that may be. I'll alert you to see, see what's going on with that and why we got that out. Um, but anyway, guys, here we go. Uh, what was it, Tuesday, I had four phone calls in one day about Cosworths. So what we've got over here, we've got the E-Type head, which we've got to strip still. We've got my BMW head, which we've got to go through. We've got um, an Audi A4, I think this is an S4 V8. Um, so it's a 40 valve. Each head is 20 valves. You can see five valves per cylinder. So you've got, usually on a head, you've got the in, two inlet valves. You've got an inlet valve, which is bigger than the exhaust. But with this one, you've got three smaller inlet valves and two slightly bigger exhaust valves. So it gets slightly confusing because usually we're used to the exhaust valves being smaller. Um, so you can see there, we've got to go through these. So we're going to blast these heads, um, obviously blast the valves. We've got 40 of them to do. Um, and we've got to cut the seat, skim them, go through them basically. Um, you know about my one. Can't wait to get in amongst that. Might even come in the weekend to tackle that. Um, right. We've got that Cosworth off the stand because at the minute we're still waiting for the liner. Um, as soon as that comes, we can get that in. We've used the stand for this one. So this is another Cosworth. Um, the cylinder head's up there. We're going to persist in stripping this. I think what's happened is if we're looking at the face, we've got the rings in, so we're going to have to do something about that. We're going to have a chat with him today whether we put the... Um, whether we put the, the top hat liners in, that's probably my preference on this, because he wants, potentially, he said he wants like 550 horsepower eventually. Um, so we're gonna get rid of those. The gasket has been blowing quite severely over here, um, and you can see the block is cracked there. That crack there, I don't think is anything to do with this. This has been blowing for quite a while. Um, so this block definitely needed a face anyway, but we're gonna long stud that. Um, we're gonna strip it out sometime today and um, and see what we've got inside, see what the crank's like, and then I can give him another phone call. Over here on the pallet, another chap turned up this morning who I spoke to, couldn't even remember speaking to him actually, <laughs> I've had that busy a week. Um, but this is another Cosworth, this is a three-door Cosworth. Um, we've got a, a 205 block, but he said this engine was a hell of a state, um, the way it was running, etc. So again, we've got to go through all this and give him some suggestions, whether we end up sticking liners in the block, I don't know yet, but. There's another one, and that is another one. So that is Paul and Pete who turned up from Kent the other day. Um, and that is a nice, normally aspirated build that we've got to do there. Um, we've done all the head work. I showed you that in a, in a previous video. Um, obviously got the normally aspirated trick cams. And um, we're going to line of the block. So, yeah. Gone mental on the Cosy front, guys. Cannot wait to get in amongst them. You all know that I specialise in the Cosworths, and I absolutely love doing them. They're my bread and butter, um, and I'm really excited about doing them. So yeah, at the moment, guys, really excited. Um, really excited about the work that we've got in. But first of all, before I go any further today, we have got to do the valve clearances on that Focus ST. So I'm just gonna show you, give you a brief run through on how we do the clearances on that. So my first job of this morning, guys, is taking this Fiesta ST head which is looking absolutely spiffing now. Obviously done the valves, done the seats. So we shot blast all the valves, then we reface them on our valve facer over here. And we put them all in, we've cut the seats. Um, so in theory now, I said to you in the last video, these buckets here are not hydraulic, they're solid. Um, so we're gonna have to do the clearance. So in theory now, because we've faced the valves and because we've cut the seats, these valves are gonna be sitting further back a few thou which means they stick further out the other end which means they close the clearances up so what we're going to do is we put the new valve stem seals in we put the valves in we're going to turn the head over now all right guys we'll just interrupt that job there getting in amongst this cosworth so this is the one that we received yesterday um, this is the one with the crack in the top of the block um, and the wire rings in the top so we'll have a little look at the other side in a minute but we've just pulled the sump off of this front covers, oil pump, and a few bits and bobs. 
So what have we found so far? Now, the guy that owns this car, Kyle, he said that he's, I think the car's done about 9,000 miles. So what the history is on the engine, he didn't know. Now, first inspection when we took the sump off is there is grinding marks on these standard rods. So I suspect that this has been built. Um, well, it has been built and obviously they've attempted to lighten the rods. So they've obviously done something. The pistons are a bit of an old school um, design, really. Um, so I suspect that they are sort of less than eight to one, probably seven and a half to one. So this has been built at some point. So someone's made the effort. Now, what have we found so far? So the front covers, it's the usual story with the cosies, leaking oil like you wouldn't believe. Um, it looks like they've used sort of genuine-ish gaskets on there. Now, oil pump. We've got three bolts there. One holds the front of the pipe down and two hold the back there. So you know on, on the front here you've got a normal hex and, and on the back you've got these multi-spline. Now, one of the multi-splines is mullered. They've reused that. I mean, these are literally a couple of quid. Um, so why anyone reuses these, I will never know. In the back, we've got a hex one one side, which was tight, and we've got one of these, which is the unmullered one, in the other side, which was loose. I've gone to undo it, and it's literally loose, so the pump's been held down by one bolt, and then they put this mullered one here to hold the front pickup down, so that's not ideal. Um, obviously, the, the front oil seal's leaking for whatever reason. Whether they put a new seal in, as I say, if this motor hasn't done too many miles, I'm not sure why they why it's leaking as bad as it is unless they put the old one back in now the sump we all know this is a four-wheel drive sump and it is a face-to-face -face. there's no gasket on this now what we use is it's like a, a fluoro green colored sealant and it's, it goes on like a liquid so you put it on very thin and what it does is it while it's open to oxygen um, or air it stays it stays, stays like liquid, but when the oxygen's gone, so on the mating face, it will go hard. That's what we use, never have issues with it. Now this silicon, you can see on here, it always baffles me why they lace on silicon. Um, you can see all down there, look, it's absolutely disgusting. Now, if you think of it sort of in simpleman's terms, if you've got a two flat faces which are meant to mate up against each other tightly, why would lacing on silicon thickly do any good? All it's going to do is come out of either side. Not so bad coming out of the front, apart from it looking crap, but when it goes on the inside, what's going to happen? It's going to get into the oil. First place it's going to go is the pickup. And sure enough, sitting in the centre here, a big pile of grey silicon was sitting there. Now you which you think, oh, well, it's got the outside, but just directly under there is the pickup tube. So if it's sitting right in the center there, it's not gonna be able to draw as much oil as it wants. And that, along with the bolt at the back that was loose, God knows what the oil pressure was on this. It's probably, if this is gonna be used in anger at any point, it's not gonna to last too long, I'll tell you that for nothing. So that was the first issue. Um, so secondly, I've stamped all the all the rods put my dots there so we've got the front here i've got one at the front of the rod two dots there three there four there so we know which way the rods go now i'm going to get these rods out um, and have a look at the crank and have a look at the the bearings and that should tell us quite a bit then what we're going to do is we're going to torque all these up we're going to measure them housings see what those rods are like these cosworth rods are brilliant rods they're tough as old boots they're a forged rod um, so as long as they're sized correctly in my eyes, up to mega power, you're talking 600 odd horsepower, um, I'd no problem in using these rods whatsoever, as long as they're sized and they're balanced correctly, um, and the, you know all the clearances are correct. Problem is with these rods, like I've said to you before, um, I've never had a set of these rods that measure what they should do, at least on one of them. So they've got to be sized, but not many people do it. Uh, so that's the next step, guys. Let's pull this out and uh, see what we've got. So we've got the caps off and you can see just by initial appearance the journals don't look too bad. This one looks a bit scored up. Now I've just wiped this but you can see in the corners there the oil, um, now if you look at the rest of the oil we certainly it's not creamy. If, it's, if it gets water in it it sometimes goes a bit 
um, it goes to sort of light brownish creamy color but in here we've got a, like a distinct gray um, tacky substance which I can only think at this stage is something to do with this gray silicon where it's sitting on the where it's sitting on here and maybe breaking down um, it's going a bit gooey getting into the oil and that could be going on the journals and just clinging onto it so that at this stage is um, what I suspect may be so just going to pull all these pistons out um, and then take the mains off take the crank out and then see what we've got there so now the cylinder head is sitting on its face you can see I've got five of the buckets in already we're just going to put these in and at the minute I'm just going to put them in dry so we pop all these in in the order that they came out as well you can see I just laid them out the way they come out and then what we're going to do to obviously bring these to open up the clearances to bring them back we just take a little bit off the valve stem now it is important um, before you go doing that that you just check get a valve put a couple of collets in and the the uh, spring retainer at the top and basically if you have a look at that valve there you've literally got about probably got about 10,000 to play with on there um, and then you've got that pip in the top there which is probably about 15 thou so you've got about 20 thou before that spring retainer touches the top of this this bucket so any more than i would say sort of half that about 10 thou then you don't use this method we'll have to start changing buckets but um that's really all we've got to play with on there before that retainer starts touching on the bucket. So you just have to do that before you go about chomping some off the top of the valve. Now, like I said to you in the last video, it's not ideal. In the vehicle, you wouldn't be able to do that anyway, but obviously with these buckets, they're quite expensive um, and it just saves going and buying them and chopping and changing and working out the clearances. You just do it this method while the head's on the bench and then you can just use all your existing buckets. So that's what we do guys, just make sure that you check that and make sure you've got enough height. So the next thing you do now, we've got all our buckets in, all the valves in, the valves are being held in by the new valve stem seals, which is ideal. What I do then is go through them all just by pressing a bucket, pushing the valve back up, making sure that everything moves free you want that bucket to move free if it doesn't move free and there's some resistance you could get a false reading when you're doing the clearances so i just go through them all making sure it's nice and free and then you know you're going to get a true reading so next step once we've done all that is we just get the get the camshafts in again do that dry to start with we don't want no oil taking up clearance um, get the caps on torque them down um, and then we'll head into the office and see what the valve clearance is meant to be for this engine. Right, so we go on the Auto Data website here, which we have an account for, and we put in our registration for this vehicle. And it's, see, it comes up with all the information of the vehicle, what it is, and we want to go over to here, which is technical specifications. And then we want to go down to service checks and adjustments. And it's got the valve clearances here. So inlet is 0.22. Now this is metric. So I'm going to convert this to imperial um, because I've got imperial feeler gauges. Um, so 0.22 to 0.28. So in the middle of that is about 0.25, which is 10 thou because there's 0.1 of a millimeter is four thou. So 10 thou there we're aiming for, and it's 0.3 is the middle of this one, so that's 12. So it's 10 and 12 thou. Uh, the bigger clearance is always on the exhaust, which is the smaller valve. That's how we normally memorize it. So 10 and 12, let's get out there and see what we've got. So we've got the inlet cam here, so we're gonna do the inlets first. 10 thou on the inlets is what we're aiming for. Um, so what we do, first of all, we'll start at one end, work our way over. We make sure that the, the tip of the lobe is facing upwards, so furthest away from the bucket. Then what we do is we press the valve from the other side and we check our clearances. So you can get six thou under those quite easily. 
So we know we got more than six thou, which is good. And eight thou under that is lifting, that you can feel it's lifting the valve slightly. So we're looking at seven thou on there. And that slides through easy. So that one there probably would be all right. We'll see what the tens like in there. And that's a lift in the valve very, very slightly. So I would say we've got nine thou here, seven thou there. So we're just going to take a smidgen off that and a tiny bit more than a smidgen off that one. So what we do is we use this little jig. Now, this wheel here can be moved over, so you've got to hold that handle. I, knew, I normally hold that with my wrist whilst manoeuvring this. This is another pat your head and rub your stomach job. So what we do is we clamp the valve sort of loosely in here and this is our winder which we wind in and out so we turn on the machine holding that over if we just very lightly move the valve up so it touches the touches the stone and then we just go forwards and backwards just moving in until we get some sparks and that may be okay so what we want to do here is try the 10 now you can feel when you push that in you can feel that 10 there it, you've got resistance on both you can feel the the lobe of the cam you can feel the bucket so that is a perfect 10 so if we just try the the 12 in there you'll find that that doesn't yeah that doesn't go in so that's absolutely perfect so we want to take a smidgen more off this one so you just touch it on nip it up that should be pretty good. So can't get the can't get the twelve in there. And the it's very, very slightly more I think I need on that one. So it does, it usually takes about an hour to do these, sometimes. We try the eight in there. Yeah, the eight's fairly loose. So I'll say we've got about nine, so a very, very tiny bit more. As I say, you have got two thou either way, really. So you've got about four thou, which you get them in, but I normally like to aim just for the middle. There we go, that's perfect. Now that's not lifting the valve. You've got a bit of resistance between the bucket and the cam. Job done. Crack on with the rest, guys. Well, thank you very much for watching today's video, guys. Until Monday's video, stay tuned where we will continue to find out what we find with that Cosworth engine. And uh, have a great weekend. See you then. Cheers, guys.